Ever thought about what actually goes into making laundry detergent? Scrubbing them out and soaking them out, and you can still come out with... Around the collar! Now try Whisk. Concentrated Whisk goes right on the dirt. Its unique formula sinks in and starts to clean before you start to wash. Gets even permanent press collars really... That simple scoop of powder or liquid that wipes out stains like magic? There's a whole world behind it. A world of factories, giant mixing machines, and carefully chosen ingredients. All working together to create the perfect formula. So how does it all happen? What does it take to turn raw materials into cleaning power behind every fresh load of laundry? Well, here at The Process World, we take a deep dive into the world of detergent manufacturing and uncover the process behind one of the most essential products in every home. Soap making started as a luxury, with early methods relying on boiling wood ashes with animal fats. It wasn't until a French scientist discovered how to make lye from table salt that production became more accessible. By the 1900s, factories were producing smoother, fragrant soaps, making them a household staple. Then, in 1916, a German scientist changed everything by creating the first synthetic detergent, which cleaned more effectively in hard water and didn't leave behind residue. This breakthrough led to an explosion of detergent production, with factories engineering formulas for different needs, stain removal, color protection, and fabric care. But how exactly are they made? Well, before we get into that, please leave a like and subscribe for more amazing videos like this one. Now, moving on. Now, before detergent goes into the box or bottle, it starts with raw materials. Factories don't just throw things together and hope for the best. Every detergent is chosen carefully, tested, and measured to make sure that the final product works the way it should. So mass industrial mixers are used in factories to precisely mix the exact quantities required for every formula, therefore ensuring proper blending. For powder detergents, dry and liquid ingredients are measured and added in stages. To form the basis, mix surfactants, builders, and fillers. While some detergents substitute zeolites, others incorporate sodium tripolyphosphate, which softens the water. Sometimes sodium metasilicate is added to boost alkalinity, which aids with grease and difficult stains. Next introduced are the colorants, which give detergent its characteristic look. While some recipes stay neutral, others call for brilliant blues or greens. Later in the process, fragrances are used to prevent breakdown under high temperatures. The procedure is very different for liquid detergents, though. The major component, water, serves as a filler. To change the pH, citric acid is included, therefore enabling the surfactants to operate more powerfully. Many different surfactants are used in factories, each meant to treat various sorts of stains. The detergent gains a smooth, glossy appearance from a unique combination of ingredients creating a pearlescent effect. After the ingredients are fully combined, the mixture moves to the next step. For powders, that means heading to the spray drying process, where liquids are fine-tuned before final adjustments. Once the ingredients are fully blended, the mixture is pumped into a spray drying tower, a massive vertical structure designed to handle extreme heat. Inside, the slurry is sprayed through nozzles, breaking into tiny droplets. At the same time, hot air circulates at high temperatures, instantly evaporating the moisture. What's left are hollow detergent granules, lightweight and easy to dissolve. The drying process is carefully controlled. If the process is too fast, the granules can be weak and crumble easily. If it's too slow, the detergent stays damp and clumps together. Machines continuously monitor airflow, temperature, and droplet size to get the texture just right. Once dried, the powder moves down to the collection bins, where it's cooled before moving on to the next stage. At this point, the base detergent is complete, but there's still more to be done before it's ready for packaging. Some key ingredients, like enzymes and fragrances, are too sensitive for the high heat of spray drying, so those come in later. That step is next. One of the most important additions is enzymes. These microscopic cleansers go for particular stains. Proteases break down stains based on proteins like blood and perspiration. Amylases deal with food starch stains. Lipases break apart oil and grease. Every one helps to ensure that clothing comes out cleaner and with less work. Then fragrances are added. These are selected especially to be mild on fabrics and to last. Whether it's flowery, citrus, or a fresh clean perfume, the fragrance has to mix nicely with the detergent. 
detergent without disintegrating over time. For some detergents, optical brighteners are included. These help fabrics reflect light, making whites look whiter and colors appear more vibrant. It doesn't change the fabric itself, but it enhances how it looks under light. All these ingredients are blended into the dry detergent through a controlled mixing process. Once everything is mixed perfectly, the detergent is now in its final form. The next step, testing. Every batch is checked to ensure that it meets the right standards because even small mistakes can affect how well it cleans. One of the first things tested is foaming ability. Detergents need the right amount of foam. Not too much, not too little. Too many bubbles can make rinsing difficult, while too little foam might make the product seem less effective even though it's doing its job. Cleaning power is also put to the test. Lab technicians apply different stains, like grease, coffee, and sweat onto fabric swatches. The detergent is then used in a controlled wash cycle to see how well it removes each stain. If the results aren't consistent, adjustments are made before the production continues. For powder detergents, moisture content is measured. If there's too much moisture, the detergent can clump together and lose its free-flowing texture. If it's too dry, the powder might become too light and dusty, which affects how it dissolves in water. For liquid detergents, viscosity is checked. The thickness has to be just right so it pours smoothly without being too runny or too thick. If needed, adjustments are made by modifying the balance of thickeners and water content. Once a batch passes all these checks, it's officially approved for packaging. This step is just as important as the rest. A good detergent won't do much if it leaks, clumps up, or loses its scent before it reaches the customer. For powder detergents, automated machines weigh and dispense the right amount into each plastic bucket or flexible pouch. The containers are tightly sealed to keep moisture out. Even small exposure to humidity can cause powder detergents to clump together, so packaging must be airtight. For liquid detergents, a process called pressure filling is used. The detergent is pumped into bottles with exact precision, ensuring that each container has the correct amount. An overflow control system prevents spills, while a weight check ensures no bottle is underfilled or overfilled. After filling, caps and seals are added. Some liquid detergents come with pull-out spout, while others use twist caps with controlled pour openings. These are applied automatically with machines screwing them on at high speed. Next comes labeling. Bottles and boxes move through another section where labels are attached. Everything has to be aligned properly, with no misprints or peeling edges. If a label isn't placed correctly, the package is pulled from the line and fixed. For liquid detergents that go into dispensers, packaging is a little different. Instead of bottles, the detergent is filled into plastic refill bags. These have built-in valves to help control how much soap is released per use. The bags are heat sealed and then tested for leaks before moving forward. Finally, all the packaged detergents are grouped into larger cartons or pallets ready for shipping. This step ensures that they can be transported without damage. Once everything is packed and loaded, the products are sent to distribution centers where they will eventually make their way to store shelves. And that's it. So now to you. With new discoveries and innovations happening all the time, will laundry detergents of the future look completely different from what we have now? Let's hear your thoughts in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell for more amazing videos like this one.